Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And in today's project we're going to be uh, sticking with our woodland theme and we're going to be painting some silver birch. Now these are some of my favourite trees, you see them all over Scotland, um, they're absolutely beautiful. And in the project we're doing today we're creating a simplified landscape with a stand of silver birch trees in it. So let's get started. So uh, this is a project that I wanted to do and I wanted to kind of create a like a stylistic way of de depicting trees. So I've come up with this method of painting them as like little clouds and I like the way that it looks a little bit like a Japanese woodblock or something like that. I have um, I've done one that I prepared earlier and then I've got all of the things here that you'll need to uh, to make the painting. So I've got some watercolour paper here, uh, this is a 7 by 10 inch block and this is cotton paper, uh, that's not entirely necessary uh, but I really like the way that you get these kind of nice blends on cotton paper, uh, it's really soft so, uh, so yeah so I'm using that one. So I've got some watercolour paints here and I have I've put a little video up just showing you how I chose the paints for this project and um, and what to do if you don't have these exact colours because you don't need to use the exact same colours that I'm using. Um, so these are the colours I'm using. I've swatched them out so you can see them a bit better. So I've got olive green, this is sepia, indigo, uh, this is burnt sienna and this is Windsor yellow. So I've also got some white gouache. You might not need this if you're neater painter than I am uh, but I used it to sharpen up some of the trees when I was finished. Other than that I've got a couple of brushes, um, I've got a six and a two, the two is just for the very fine details and you may want to use a bigger one than that. I've also got this uh, wash brush which I'm going to use to apply water to the paper. I've got a pencil and rubber uh, which I'm going to use to draw my design and um, and then the usual for painting I've got some paper towel and I've got some clean water. I've also got some masking tape. Now this is a watercolour block so I don't really need to tape the paper down or anything but what I'd like for this is that nice clean sharp edge around the outside so I'm going to uh, apply some tape all the way around the paper and uh, and give myself a nice clean border. As I'm applying the tape I found that if I use it straight from the roll, and this goes like no matter what kind of tape I'm using, so yeah, if I stick it onto the paper, and especially with um, with cellulose paper, I find that it, when you tear it off, it can tear the paper a bit. So this stops it by sticking. If you stick it to the table first before you stick it to your paper, it just takes the the worst of the stick off it. And I've never had a problem with it tearing the paper once I've started doing this. Right, so I'm going to just sketch my design out, but if you want to, I have created some line art already that you can go to my website and print out and you can trace this and use it as the basis for your uh, for your sketch. So um, uh, the link to that will be in the description box and uh, yeah, there's also a video on my channel that shows you how to transfer, if you're not sure, how to transfer from line art onto your watercolour paper. So there'll be a link to that as well. So I'm going to sketch in some uh, some hills in the background. I'm going to make them come maybe a bit a third, maybe a little bit higher up the sheet. Um, and they can be fairly rough like that. And maybe another one, that line there. And then I'm going to have a line come down there and then this is the hill that all my trees are going to be standing on. So let's see, do I want to change any of these lines? I might make this one a little bit higher up like that and then yeah so that one can go there, that one can come up a bit higher and I'm just making these up. And then this bit down here 
I'm going to have some like rocky bits on it, so I'm just going to draw some shapes. Oh, losing my pencil. And um, maybe a bit there. Maybe another one there. I'm going to change my pencil because this one's about to lose its lead. So there we go. Let's use this one instead. And the rocks are making some some bits angular and some bits round. So let's have a bit come in from the side there. And maybe another bit here. And then in between them, I'm just going to draw some little jagged lines just to break up that surface. And I'll use those jagged lines to, um, to give me different areas that I can paint in different colours. And then I want my stands of trees. So I can start by just drawing um, the silver birches. I've got nice, like, straight trunks, but then they do have... Um, bits that branch out from them as well. So let's have two there, two big ones there. Let's have a one there. And what I found when looking at them is that they kind of lean slightly at different angles. Let's have one there going up like that. And then let's have two smaller ones there and then I've got, oh, I've got two clumps of four now, which isn't, which isn't a great look. So let's put in like another little one there maybe, or maybe it needs to be more like that. Maybe slightly bent. Um, does that need another like, little one in here? Maybe something like that. So I've just, so far, all I've got is these lines that pretty much go straight up. Some of them branch off. Like that. So those are going to be my trunks. And some of them I want to make a little bit thicker. Just give them a little bit more definition. Some of them can stay quite thin. That one's a bit thicker, and then maybe it branches off there. And then maybe there's a little branch there. So I'm just having fun inventing where my trees are going. And the trunks will be a little bit thicker at the bottom, but I'm making them fairly thin overall. And then sometimes they're kind of branching somewhere up here. So there, we've got um, a little thicket. And then I'm going to draw some like little cloud shapes. So I can start at the top and just put in some wavy lines here. And these are those like, when you, look at trees from a distance you can see sometimes the leaves cut sort of grow in clusters. There'll be a cluster there and I'm just going to keep going and filling all of this space and I'm going to put in these little clusters wherever like I get to the top of a branching bit. So here I can put in like a little cluster there There can be one here and I'll make some of these ni nice irregular shapes so they're not all like round. And then so I've got my basic shapes here and then what I want are I want some of these things, some of these little clusters to kind of come in front of some of the trees. So like this one here, like go in front of that tree there and I'll get rid of that bit. 
and maybe there's another cluster here that's maybe coming out on a little branch there that's maybe going behind that tree but in front of this one. And as I go I just keep adding in the little clusters and sometimes choosing that the cluster is going to go in front of a branch and sometimes like this one it's going to go behind like that. And I'm just going to keep going until I've pretty much filled in this whole shape with those little clusters of branches. Branches, leaves. So that's my sketch pretty much done. What I want to do now is take my rubber and just go over any areas that I want to, um, that I know I want to paint. And I'm just gonna, maybe I can sharpen up some of the lines. I can choose which ones I want. And anything that looks a bit dark, so maybe it's a bit dark over here. I can just lighten up. I still want to be able to see it. But I want it to be clear what I'm painting and what I'm not. So I'm going to start by uh, putting down a wash of uh, clear water and I'm going to come right down to um, kind of below where the hills start. Um, and for this I'm just going to use the biggest brush I've got, which happens to be a nice big one. But yeah, if you've got a smaller brush, don't worry, just do the same thing, it'll just take a bit longer. Now my whole surface there at the top of the page is slightly damp and you can see a little bit of a sheen on the surface there. So I'm going to put some colour on and what I want is a nice bluey grey. So I've got this indigo blue which is really really strong, it's got a lot of, lot of colour in it um, and it's a little bit much for what I want. What I want is nice overcast winter, autumn winter sky. So I'm just going to add a little bit of sepia into my blue until I've toned it down. I've just calmed it down a bit. So it's still a little bit blue, it's just much more neutral. And then I'm going to take my paper and just run it along the top. And it's all going to seep into that nice wet paint that I put down. And I'm just going to bring it down. It may be a little bit more blue. So I'm just blending it backwards and forwards and you can lift your paper as well and that will help it blend as well. And then let's put in a little swoop of it down here. I'm just doing some blending, maybe a little bit across there. Although that's going to, um, I don't want to put too much colour where the trees are going to go. Um, some of them are going to be greeny and the blue will mix with the green nicely. but. I don't want to overdo it and I don't I want to leave enough space in the trees that I can put some highlights in. So I'm just going to keep adding and blending. If you want to you can go back to your big brush and blend that a little bit more. I'm just going backwards and forwards. Make it nice and soft. 
and bring that colour down. And I think that's all I'm going to do for now. I've got some nice little stripes in there and this is going to soften and fade as the, as the paint dries. Um, so I'm going to leave that to dry completely and then I'm going to come back and start working on my trees. So my sky is now completely dry and I can start painting my trees and all I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up various greens. So I've got this olive green here and for some of the areas I can just use that straight, for others I'm going to mix in some yellows, I'm going to mix in some blues, I'm going to mix in all of these different colours basically and I'm going to give myself a, a nice range and I'm aiming for kind of lighter, more yellowy colours maybe towards the top and then some darker kind of shadows like in the middle and maybe at the bottoms. So I'm just going to fairly neatly paint those little kind of cloud shapes that I was drawing before. And each area, as I paint it, I can drop in some other colours, just tiny little bits, maybe some of the burnt sienna in the bottom of that one, and a little bit more yellow at the top, and then just let that blend and see what it does. So let's, oh, got a bit of a hair there. Let's paint this one up here. I'm going to add a bit more yellow into this one because this is kind of, it's got some of that blue from the sky in it already. So the yellow will just make that pop a little bit more. bit more green at the bottom. There we go. And then I don't want to paint any of the ones that are directly next to them so I'm kind of going to dot around. And I'm going to mix up some of the yellow with a little bit of the burnt sienna and get myself a nice autumnal highlighty bit in this one. So I want my little areas to have quite clean edges because I want quite a sharp graphic look to this piece. So if I didn't want that I'd be quite happy to go into these areas and allow the colours to all blend together. But I want to keep them a little bit distinct. So I'm just choosing the areas that I paint and working my way down the trees. And when I get to a bit like this, I've got these uh, the branches from the trees. I'm just going to um, go around them. So I'm going to paint the gap. There we go. So there's a gap there and a gap here. I'm not quite sure where the top of this one goes, so let's paint it up to about there. So you can see I've left, I hope you can see that, I've left a little bit of a white gap there where those tree branches are. And I can go in with the very tip of my brush and just neaten that shape off a bit and make these branches as skinny and delicate as I want them to be. So 
So let's do another one of those here. And there's a little branch, a little tree trunky bit going right through this little cloud. So I just need to make sure I leave that space for it. Let's do a nice bit here. And again, I'm using these nice autumnal colours. And I can drop in some yellowy green at the top and maybe a little bit more of that burnt sienna at the bottom. And if you do miss or overpaint any of your little tree trunks, that's going to be okay because we are going to reinstate them a little bit later on with our gouache. That's why I've got it. Because as careful as I am, or I think I am, I still don't think I'll be able to keep these completely white until I finish painting. But I'm going to give it a go. But I like to know that I've got that added bonus of the um, of the gouache to be able to reinstate some of these tree branches and trunks if I paint over them. So as I get towards the bottom I'm making my colours a little bit deeper and I'm mixing in a little bit of that uh, indigo into my greens and just to give me some nice dark shadows especially on these little bits which are would be like underneath the rest of the canopy. So I've got quite a few bits of the trees painted in now, but I can't do any more just yet because they're all kind of touching the wet bits. So I'm going to leave those. I'm going to move on and I'm going to do these distant hills here. So for my distant hills, I want to use pretty much that sky colour that I mixed up, which I still have on my palette. I'm going to add a little bit more water into it. And I'm just going to drag that along the top and bring it down. I'm going to add some water to it as I bring it down and that will Maybe make it look a little bit misty and you can decide. So I had some like rough bits in there and I wasn't sure whether to keep them or not and I ended up painting over them. But if you wanted to leave them in there, that would that would, could look good too. So I've just painted right up to that kind of tree trunk there and I'm going to take the same colour and run it along the top of where these hills would be. Add a little bit more water into it and bring it down. And I'm going to do that in each section in between the tree trunks. So I've got little gaps to fill in between where my tree trunks would be. And I'm just being quite careful to leave those white spaces where the trees are. So paint at the top and wet my brush a little bit and bring it down. Paint at the top. A little bit of clean water on my brush and pull that paint down. I just keep working across doing the same thing all the way and making sure I leave the white of those trees. Right now I'm going to paint this bit down here and I've got my rocks so I want a nice kind of neutral grey colour for that so I can 
mix a very similar colour I, that I did for the sky, um, some of the sepia and some of the indigo and then I'm going to paint these little blobs in for the rocks. I might lighten that up a bit. Now I can go back to the trees and I'm going to um, just keep going and adding in more of the, uh, the little cloud forms. Again, kind of lighter on the top and then getting darker as I, as I work down. Uh, I'm going to speed the video up for this part and I'll come back to you when I go back to paint the rest of the hills. I think that's good. I'm going to leave the trees there and I'm going to come back down here. And I've got lots of these messy greens, similar colour to the trees, on my palette and I'm going to use that to fill in this area down here. So nice kind of fairly bright greens. Because they're close to us we'll see them kind of brighter and lighter than we will the ones in the distance. So I'm just going to use one colour to fill in an area and then I can drop in some other colours to mix it up. So let's drop a little bit more of that green in there. On like that. Let that blend. And let's do this bit down here. Maybe mix a bit more of the burnt sienna into that one. And then this hill here, I think I can do that one. I'm going to make that quite dark, so I'm going to use a fair bit of blue on that. A fair bit of that indigo. I kind of want this to look like, like a nice forested hill. So again, I'm painting the top and adding some water and I'll bring that down. And remember to leave the white space for the trees. I'm gonna put in some more colour here and I think I'm gonna drop in a little bit of that burnt sienna as well, just in a few areas and let it kind of blend. Okay, now I can let that dry and see what it does. And now this bit over here is dry so I can fill in this bit in the corner. Okay, now to fill in this bit over here, this bit's still wet but I can start at this side and work over. So I'm gonna do that. Um, so 
I want a colour that's in between that one and this one because things that, you know, the hills that recede into the distance, they get kind of cooler and hazier as they, as they retreat. Mix a little sepia into this greeny blue that I've got here and run that along that edge. And maybe a little bit more blue in there. And then bring that colour down. And again, remember to leave little gaps for where the trees are. There we go. Just these little bits here now. And again, back to that more vibrant yellowy green to fill in those bits there. I think that my rocks could do with a little bit more definition. So I'm going to mix some more sepia into this indigo over here and just give them some like areas of shadow at the bottoms like this. And they can be fairly random shapes because rocks are fairly random. but mainly at the bottom where it kind of meets the ground and more on the left hand side I'm doing, imagining that the light's coming from the right. So yeah, something like that. So I've zoomed you in so you can see a bit better what I'm doing here. But here on my palette, I've got some of that white gouache and I've got a nice fine paintbrush. So mine happens to be a size two. If you've got a smaller one, that's even better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for any areas in the trees where I've made a bit of a mess and things don't look nice and smooth. And I'm just gonna take some of that white gouache and run it over the, the branches. So there's a bit there. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Let's run that gouache down there and it just becomes much more obvious. I can also use it, I've got some pencil marks in here that um, have a little bit of paint over them so I won't be able to rub them out but I can just use that gouache to hide them. So just tiny bits in little areas. So now I've got some sepia on my size two brush and I'm just adding a few little dots and stripes on the tree trunks just to make them look like that silver birch pattern. And if I put them where the white of the tree trunk is over the white of the paper, like here, it makes it really obvious where the, where the tree trunk is and that really helps. So just keep going, adding them fairly randomly all over the branches. So now I can peel the tape off. And I get that lovely crisp white edge around my painting. So that is my silver birch stylized landscape painting.
If you give this a go, I'd love to know. Uh, like I said, that line art is available on my website uh, if you want to use that. If you want to post your work to Instagram, you can tag me at Lou Rachel Davis because I love seeing what you've made. So if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from me, then do subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye bye.